It's actually quite sunny and I'm in Wales. Believe me, that is rare. But this is Cardiff. That is an amazing affordable home we've come to see and this is fully charged. <laughs> So I've come to Park Erin, which is a housing development uh, in the Rhondda Valley in Wales. And it, it, because all this stuff about like, let's do some eco homes and let's make some homes that are more energy efficient. And it's always one or two or maybe three houses. Here, it's 220 houses they're building with solar PV built in, with batteries, with ground source heating. If you look at all these houses, there's no chimneys. This housing estate doesn't burn anything to make the houses comfortable and warm and nice to live in. Doesn't burn anything. And this is how houses should be built and will be built in future. But we just need all the builders of the world to literally pull their finger out, stop making excuses and build proper houses like this for people in the 21st century. So James, I'm really impressed with what I'm seeing here because it's just so important that this sort of thing's done. I'm seeing three affordable homes with solar panel, the whole roof, not like a bit of a solar panel stuck on top, the whole roof is solar. But tell me what else is going on in these houses. Really so uh, we, so this, is, this is how we see the sort of the future of housing. You know, this, these homes are fully electrified. So first of all, there's, there's a higher standard of building fabric. We've got renewable energy technologies. But really importantly, they're able to communicate as an aggregate to be able to start supporting our kind of future energy system. So there's lots of really clever renewable tech in here. These, you know, these properties, which is a pilot development for us, we're working with Tyrian Homes. Tyrian Homes are an affordable landlord, so we can work together with Tyrian to, to look at this, right. to look at this, to look at this model as a as a future housing model. Uh, and, and you know, these are for everyday people. Right. You know, this is all about giving. Uh, everybody an opportunity to live with a lower carbon footprint and so when so the solar is will obviously power the house when you're there but there's, so you've got batteries in there as well yeah so and, it, and no gas heating no this gas is, this yeah is so no good gas. to hear no gas so we've got ground source heat pump systems here so we've got 170 meter boreholes that go under un, under this block right. right here that that feeds these three properties so we've got a ground source heat pump paired to intelligent energy storage which is a hot water tank by a company called Mixergy right. who I think you may know. I do know very well yeah. And, and then we also have uh, generation and, and electrical storage as well. Right. I mean one of the other things you mentioned which I was fascinated by because I do this manually all the time is the actual um, you know the washing machines the tumble yep. dryers the ovens and everything they're all talking to each other. I mean, yeah so it's, it's really we've got uh, appliances in here we've, we're using some Samsung appliances which will connect into our platform through our API you know we're looking at the high load items how do we right. how do we first of all we make sure that they don't all all spike at the same time yes. meaning that we go off the battery op, you know off the battery operation but also how can we start to change behavior right uh, so the, the approach that we take is that we can do a lot of the mitigation on energy for the re for the resident, but some of those are behavior changes. They are yeah. doing things at different times. So, with our user interface, we'll allow we'll we'll tell them it's now's a really good time. You know, right? Turn the tumble dryer on, yeah. uh, or let us turn it on for you. Yeah. You know, that that's 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 the that's the sort of model where we can start to educate that you know, like now, now would be a good time because we're not in. It's not you know, it's not quite. Not quite five o'clock yeah. yet, so you know. So the demand's sun. probably yeah. still pretty low. The sun is shining. Yeah. Now would be a good time, you know. In, in three or four hours' time, it, it won't be, and, yeah. and we can start to, you know, start. To and I mean, the people are going to, I think, learn that simply because they'll, at the end of the month, they'll see their electricity bill and go, yeah. either, oh my god, that's quite big, or oh my god, that's so tiny. Yeah, so, ex yeah. Ex exactly. You know, our our vision is one where homes are, you know, play a play a role of reacting alongside. The future energy system yeah. so 
Now, rather than turn the power stations up and down, we can change the demand. Right. Yeah, you can effectively turn the house up and down. Exactly. I mean, people, the yeah. old yeah. way is generating power in big power stations yeah. and, and, and fi sending it out to what is a fixed demand. The new way is intermittent energy like wind and solar, but then uh, ch tuning the demand to fit, to fit the generation. Right. So on a, on a windy night or a, or a sunny day, you know, we can harvest as much energy as we can for free and that's clean energy and then and then when you know later on in the day the occupants there for the occupants to use right. and then in terms of construction costs then presumably because there's another set of houses here that are of yeah. very similar size yeah. basically i'd rather live in these but the, the cost differential there presumably this does, does cost more at the moment there, to build. there is i mean we, we it's some it's somewhere between on, on the larger sites it's somewhere between 15 and twenty thousand. Uh, as an additional capital cost. Right. So we are paying more at the moment. We do expect that cost to come down dramatically. Yeah. But then if you look at it on a life cycle basis, these properties, they're saving a lot it's of money, huge amount of money. Yeah. every year, you know? Yeah. So, and we haven't yet attributed a value to the carbon that they're saving, but yes. you know, in time, uh, you know, to? council tax will yeah, may, yeah. may change and yeah. there might be other sort of uh, sort of carbon l yeah. l levies that we might have to you know, manage as people. That, so, uh, you know, th these, th these are very close to zero carbon now right. and within the next sort of five to 10 years, as the grid decarbonizes, they'll be zero carbon. Right. So they'll, they'll take benefit. And I think, I mean, I think that's something we're gonna see is, uh, you know, high carbon mm. homes are gonna, you're gonna be paying more, which is basically <laughs> rich people's big houses with massive gas we, boilers. We, we, they we, should pay more. Is that we outrageous? have to find a way to create a differential between um, housing that is uh, renewable, is green, has a yeah. lower carbon footprint yeah. versus traditional. And, and the, the market at, at the moment doesn't, doesn't force that change. You know, no. a, you know, on paper, a valuer might say, this is worth exactly the same, right. um, but that doesn't factor into count, you know, all those future policy changes that are heading. You know, we've got to get the whole country net yeah. zero by 2050, yeah. everything. Um, so housing is actually one of the relatively easy yeah. solutions in there. I, 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 if you think about uh, decarbonizing aviation or farming shipping. or shipping, oh, yeah, you know, all really this hard. stuff's really yeah. hard, you know. Yeah. The um, technology exists. Spending basically. less and yeah. living more comfortably. Yeah. You know, that's, you know. Kind of makes I sense. I take this as a quick, as yeah. I take this as a quick win. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. No, really, really good. So then, the, but the, the heat pump then is taking. This, I just think this is so cool that you've drilled down here because yeah. a lot of people I think are familiar with like ground source heating where you've run a, a hose under the ground, like a, yeah, yeah. you know, a few yeah. inches under the ground. But this is straight the, down. The deeper you go, the more stable the temperatures right. are. So, so we've we, you know we're 170 meters down here under this under under these plots, and you know that 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 ground temperature is stable you know right. all year round, yeah. and that's the that's the reason we like ground sources because. At the time of year you need the heat the most, you're looking to st stable temperatures, which is which is why we tend to favour ground source. But you know, it's, it's not it's not it's not, not, all, it's not always no. that you can do it, and and we look, you know we would consider all sorts of you know renewable tech. But then it is the pump that is pumping that fluid around in the ground source. Mm. I'm assuming is that quite a small pump? It's not using a lot. Yeah, of it's, it's it's it doesn't yeah it absolutely doesn't doesn't use much energy at all. So right. you know the 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 the, prov the, you know, the heat pump here provides sort of 400% efficiency overall heat to this building. That's not bad, is it? When you think of like, well, an internal combustion engine, 25%, and your heating system is 400. Yeah, and, 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 if, and particularly then if we run it so that we take advantage of the, 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 you know, the off-peak pricing, you know, yeah. the lower pricing. Of oh, course, you don't have to have it on all the time. Then. No, and, right. we, and we can bring a, you know, bring a building up to temperature before the electricity pricing gets high, you know, because right. a lot of uh, skeptics will say, oh, you know, electricity is four times the price of gas, so you're not yeah. going to get a saving. But, but these properties will prove that we will get a saving. Right. Actually, we, you know, as a, in, in providing heat and power to this building, we're expecting savings to be half of traditional energy bill. Right. So it's, a, it's, it's, you know, it's a real opportunity to optimize the comfort, but also the, the, the cost at which we purchase the electricity. Right. And then the other thing I've noticed, there's not radiators as we, what you would expect with a wet heating system. So is that under, is it under floor? Yeah, it, it, you know, work, I mean, I did, you know, ideally paired to a low temperature system, you know, under floor works quite well. I think we, something that, that we may see vary on sites, but right. in, in this, in this 
opportunity. We wanted, you know, I think that the ability to hold a little bit more mass and, and allow you to sort of, I guess, play with that residence time where you can bring the temperature up, right. you're building up to temperature, you know, and, and, and kind of and reduce the amount of time, run time of the heat pump at the, at the peak time. Right. Yeah. It's so important though, as I'm sure you you know, I know that that's what you feel as well, that when you're building new houses, it's yeah. just so critical that they, these things are used now. Andy, I've got to say, seeing this now is really exciting. Seeing this many houses being built on this, what you're doing here is just, it's just, well, it should be happening everywhere. It should be happening <laughs> everywhere, shouldn't it? And I, yeah. we, we, we don't know why it's not. You know, yeah, it's it's yeah. crazy. Uh, there's so 225 can, in all. So it's 225 houses. And I mean, in terms of the, the, the overall, their, their potential overall energy usage, are you covering close to what they will consume with, with the, the, the so they're, you've got they're on that? nearly there they're very high performing so we, we worked with uh, Tyrion and uh, Pobble group who are um, the, the partners on this scheme along with the contractors and all the team building of course yeah uh, and so they're they're a long way towards net zero and right. what we've done with these homes is allow them that uh, they do, we don't need to go back to them in future right. to do anything else to get them net zero so they will become zero carbon over time right. And that's an important thing, I think an important message for, that, for the purchasers and for the people that live here in the rental properties, yes. to just know that they're in, you know, in maybe a dozen years, they'll be net zero. They're very close already as the grid right. decarbonizes. So really, these... they're, they're, the, the only reason they're not net zero now is because of the grid, not their own their yeah. homes. Yeah, so we've, we've, we've taken the approach with the, with the partners that we're always working to get, firstly, the energy demands down. You know, the, the, yeah. the building industry has already learned the mantra of fabric first. Right. So we worked with our partners to make sure that the envelopes are really good they're well sealed they don't have drafts they've right. got good levels of insulation all of the right stuff built in yeah because it doesn't break it doesn't need maintenance it's yeah. there for life and that's where you start but once you've got the energy demands down uh, at that point you've really got to look at how how you deal with the remaining energy demands we still want hot water we still want 21st century quality of life you know all of yeah. that so we have got you know as you can see photovoltaics on practically every roof yeah some of them uh, are we got seven kilowatt peaks on some of these uh, right. so there's which is big. way more than not most people would have on their house yeah right. yeah it's a it's a big PV array yeah. on some of them others have got less uh, but that's depending on the on the layout and the orientation yeah. and what we didn't want to do is build homes which are serried ranks all facing the same right. way you know it's it's more important that you build good spaces and places that people yeah. will love and cherish and feel like home yeah. that can also generate yeah uh, but ultimately, if they if they don't feel like it's home, if it's not a great place to be, it's not it's not going to be kept. It's not going to be looked after, and in 30 years' time, we'll be bulldozering it. Yeah. So yeah. you've got to build a good place first, yes. and then look at how you deal with the energy secondarily. But right. secondarily is important. You know, we've got to get that working. Yeah. The solar panels are really the only visible bit of what is a completely different home. It's, yeah. de it's designed to be like a normal home, and that's kind of the point. You go into these, it doesn't look different. You live in them how you'd normally live. You don't have to do anything weird or wacky. You don't have to hug the tree before you walk in, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but the PV is on, on the roof. You've got storage for uh, hot water. So we've got thermal storage, a very smart right. uh, tank from our partners there. We've got battery storage, which is storing the electrical. We've got a ground source heat pump. So there's boreholes going down something around about 60 stories down into the ground wow. uh, to, to couple to the to the geothermal heat and that's pulling up into a shoebox unit in in the home I'm assuming then the, the benefits from the point of view of the tenants are, are lower energy bills if nothing else that's it so we've got I mean I guess the most important thing is is reducing the energy costs right. uh, and, and, and secondly giving them the opportunity to reduce their carbon footprint because you know as, as time goes on that's something that's going to be more and more important to people as we've seen over the last couple of years right. these properties give them that ability to to, to, to save money that we've built in other things that allow them to save some time and convenience in in a, in a more complex property right. but also save the planet at right. the same time And then all the homes are on three phase, is that right? So, so it's 
yeah. which is unusual in this country. It's common yeah. elsewhere in Europe. Common, common in Europe, um, and absolutely three phase. It's primarily three phase. You can just see the cables sticking out by the uh, by the uh, right, meter box right. there. Uh, it's three phase for cars. Right. Because um, whilst you can charge a car, you can charge a car on a 13 amp yeah. plug. It'll just take you a week or so. Yeah. Well, yeah, a couple of days. Uh, seven and a half kilowatt charges are good for overnight charging. But what we're keen to do is use these homes as part of the energy grid. Right. And by and, and using them as part of the energy grid means we need to be able to draw power from the grid when the grid wants to get rid of it. Yeah. And that means the quicker we can draw it, the better. Right. So from our perspective, slightly selfishly, the quicker we can charge a car when there's a demand response call, yeah. the better with these homes can support the grid right um, and the uh, as always building site isn't yes, it? Yeah. it is a building site, uh, so that, but, but from the from the from the residents point of view of course if they get home at five o'clock and they know they're going out again they're a bit low it's a fast charge yeah 22 and a half kilowatts goes in at more than 100 miles an hour depends yes. on the car as you yeah. know but so yeah it's a fast charge right uh, and that's really where the three phase comes right. into its own it's, it's having gone through painful retrofits just to see you know, you start from that point. Yeah. Is the house well insulated? Yes. Yeah. Does the door have wind coming around the side? No. no exactly. Yeah. Those things are so critical. Yeah. Get the basics in, get it built in. As you say, it's much cheaper to do it built in. Yeah. So we've got uh, boreholes going down, we've got the heat pumps in, we've got the batteries, we've got the whole water storage, we've got a fibre connection that goes into each home, right. separate to the residence, so that all of the systems can be run as grid connected. Right. Now that means that if the broadband router goes off for the resident then yeah they're they're streaming of whatever the next big si hit series is yeah uh, clearly fully charged yeah um, <laughs> then uh, then that might be interrupted but we've still got co reliable connection yeah. to control the kit and that means that when we're in conversations with the district network operator then we can be saying to them yeah we are confident that we can turn these homes up or down to right. respond to the Ooh, grid right so if the grid puts out a call and says we've got way more wind than we need We'll be turning on the hot water tanks, right. we'll be turning on Check the electrical the batteries, batteries the, yeah. if the car's charged, plugged yeah. in, we'll be charging the car. It's like, hey guys, <laughs> all right. you can eat, kind right. of make the most of it. Yeah. Uh, because it helps the grid and it helps the residents. Yeah. So it's yeah. a good response both ways. Right. So yeah, tucked under there is our, oh, con right. is our control unit. We, we, we call that the building energy engine, or the B for short, because right. uh, B is obviously pretty important to us as well. Um, so that controls all of the other bits of kit and means that the residents aren't worrying about all of this cabling yeah. and pipe work and components and all the rest of it. They get on with living their life, right. uh, using our platform and things. That's running or everything for them, anticipating their demands and making sure they're getting a low carbon, low cost lifestyle. Right. So that's kind of important. The wires going into that are very... When it's wired up, it'll yeah. be really important. Yes. <laughs> it's nearly, <laughs> it's, it's on the way. I can tell it's on the way. Yeah, just let's really underline that there is no gas on the site. No, None no of gas on the site at all. Um, right. So it's entirely uh, electrified. Yeah. And so those pipes coming in are from the borehole. Right. Uh, and there's a small loop around feeding a couple of homes. Each has a, a borehole or two connected onto it. Those are the incoming. Right. They go into the shoebox unit there, and that's the heat pump. That is uh, the heat pump, right? That's the, that's the heat for the whole home. That's so that extracts the, 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 the heat from the, the borehole, concentrates it and puts it into the central heating system. Yeah. Is that a, a yeah, reasonable way it. of describing the, the how thing it works? The, thing yeah. to, the easiest way to think of a heat pump is it condenses the heat right. to, to make it usable. And um, people go, does that work when it's below zero? And of course, the easiest way to remember that is actually it's not below zero because if you think in Kelvin, it's 270 Kelvin, even if it's minus three Celsius. Right. So it's got a lot of energy in yeah. it and all it does is it condenses it to make that up to a temperature that we find useful. Uh, and that's providing the heating and the hot water. Uh, what else have we got in there? So we've got our three-phase incoming electricity. Right. Uh, that's, as we said, outside. That's primarily to feed uh, for the car, so we can use that to help support the grid, draw right. power from the grid when there's demand. Um, pipe work up, which will get insulated. We've got the battery. That's the battery, the house battery, right. So that's a five kilowatt hour battery. Right. Uh, and that's enough, obviously, to run the home. What we, what we try and do with these homes is run them outside of peak periods. So the national grid, as you'll know, uh, has a peak period between about 4 and 8 p.m. when yeah. everyone is using power and yeah. there isn't much generation unless it's particularly windy. So what we try to do with these homes is effectively shift all of the electrical demand outside of that peak period. Right. So it's coming from the roof, it's going into the battery and it's being used probably between 4 and 8 p.m. when when the grid prices are highest the grid demand means that it's the dirtiest grid at that yeah. time yeah. and so we're running off zero carbon when everyone else is running off 250 300 grams per kilowatt hour yes uh, to give that kind of that kind of impact all right so the, so all these houses then if there's a 
which we, we're witnessing an excess of energy, negative wholesale price, all those things. Yeah. You can charge the battery, you can heat the water, you can charge the car. I mean, there's, yeah. you've got some, some yeah, considerable the storage, storage capacity. Yes. Is, that's the yeah. key. And, and, and our, our mantra we dreamt up some years ago now, but we follow kind of a reduce, balance, generate approach. And that works. Right. First of all, reduce the demand. So the fabric here is really good. Yeah. Look at energy efficiency, look at how that can work. Before you even think about generating, look at balance, and that means storage. That means yeah. be able to put the energy, whether it's thermally or electrically, put it somewhere useful. Yeah. You can use it later. Yeah. Squirrel it away. Yes. Uh, and then generate. And the generate is last because um, small scale generation isn't necessarily the most efficient. Uh, and it's not necessarily the best looked after because it's by residents that aren't necessarily going to get up and clean the panels yeah. and all the rest of it. Uh, and, and, it's, and so from that point of view, we say do it, it helps. But don't necessarily well, don't, not the redesign the scheme. Yeah. You know, don't as we said earlier, don't do everything south facing. Don't build this. Build a place that people will treasure. Yeah. I mean, I'm an architect by training, so it comes from that. You know, yeah. build a place people will treasure. And if you build a place people will treasure, they'll look after it. It'll have a long, sustainable life. That's a really good outcome. If you can also get some generation on there, brilliant. Yeah. If you can get some balancing in there, even better. And make sure it's built with low energy demands. And that's kind of the reduce, balance, generate mantra. Love it. So that's it. I just want to thank Sarah Holmes for showing us around this incredible development. I think this is so exciting. They're also doing other bigger developments that we're going to go and look at next year with even more. There's one, one with 600 houses, which are all like this. These places are going to soon become net, genera net generating capacity. These are power stations you're looking at. There's times of the day when this will be exporting a, a proper amount of power into the grid. It is amazing what they're doing. They're going to be so cheap to live in. And when the word spreads, when the people who live in Park Erin tell their friends and neighbours from other places what their electricity bill is and that's all they pay for, they don't have gas, I think the news is going to spread and people are going to go, I want a house like that. I don't want a nonsense house where it has a stupid old dated gas boiler. Goodness sake, sorry, I'm, I always go off on a rant on those things. That's all. Uh, please do subscribe to Fully Charged. We're going to be looking at a lot of other exciting building developments. Uh, coming up, um, please do look at the YouTube membership and uh, the Patreon link. Obviously, if you want to have a quick, quick uh, scan of the old Patreon link, we'd always be hugely grateful. We're very, very uh, indebted to all the wonderful people who support us on Patreon. Uh, but that's it. As always, if you have been, thank you for watching.